organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Tonight on Daily Iowa TV, Iowa City Area Crime Stoppers take an unusual step as they search for answers after a weekend shooting. And harmless or dangerous, University of Iowa dentists say there's more to teeth whitening than meets the eye. And the latest from one of the wildest sports weekends to date, coming up in just a bit. Daily Iowa TV is ready to go. Good evening, I'm Nick Fisher. And I'm Melissa Dawkins. Iowa City Area Crime Stoppers are now offering a $1,000 reward to anyone with information on a shooting that left at least one woman hospitalized over the weekend. Shots rang out here at the Pheasant Ridge apartment complex near the 2600 block of Bartlett Road in Iowa City. Police say UHC doctors are treating the woman for gunshot wounds. They are not yet releasing her condition. And police say authorizing a cash reward of this type in this kind of case is actually pretty unusual. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Their number is at the bottom of your screen. The UI's Iowa Flood Center wants to install sensors across the state to monitor how deep the ground freezes. They're worried about flooding. Winters like, the one, like this one leaves, us, leaves the soil unable to absorb spring rains. So the center is asking the Iowa legislature on Tuesday for $1 million to install a network of ground sensors. But what about the flooding this year? The National Weather Service says that the area is actually below normal flood risks for this time of year. But Johnson County says they're prepared for the worst with sandbags. And with the melting snow and warming temperatures, some students and Iowa City residents were a little too excited to dress for the warmer weather. Scantily clad runners turned out for this year's Nearly Naked Mile on Friday. Daily Iowan reporter Matt Starnes was there, fully clothed, to bring us the story. Gibson Square on the University of Iowa campus was unusually crowded Saturday morning as more than 400 runners stripped down and ran a mile in the cold morning air. The race, which was put on by Students Today, Alumni Tomorrow, helped United Action for Youth gather donations of money and clothing to help families in need. Usually get around 2,000 pounds of clothes that goes towards that, so, and it helps out families that uh, need help maybe with getting clothes for their kids and stuff, so. To participate, each runner was required to donate at least one item of clothing. The clothing will be made available this Wednesday as part of the organization's annual spring clothing drive, which aims to provide gently used, stylish clothing for teens. Uh, what would you guys donate then? Um, shirt. Shirt? Yep, yeah. all of us. Here. Yeah, same here. Racers of all ages were encouraged to wear creative outfits, and they did not disappoint. Prizes were awarded for runners' costumes and flashy clothing, or lack thereof. Uh, so it was kind of a last-minute brainstorm last <laughs> night. We were throwing some things together, um, and we were looking up in our room and saw all of our flags hanging up. Uh, so, I mean, it just kind of came together. Some were more optimistic than others about the temperatures, which were barely above freezing. All right, why the speed Why not the speed oh, That's the real question. Yeah, Matt Starnes, Daily Iron TV. This was the charity run's sixth year. Two wheels, two hands, a little guidance in one semester. That's what students here at the UI are working with as they race against the clock to finish their semester projects. A fully functioning bicycle built from scratch. Students showed off their creations at an auction Friday for the Johnson County Youth Odd Riders program. The program provides kids with everything they need to hit the open road on a bike. This year's the first year for the auction and the program's third year. Right now, the program supports more than a dozen riders. A group of UI students dressed up Saturday night to celebrate diversity at Multicultural Forum. Organizers say the event helps bring together members from UI multicultural organizations to network and collaborate. Tim's studio submitted some photos of the event. It wasn't all work, though. More than 250 students dove into some tasty cultural cuisine and showed their best moves on the dance floor. This is the third year for the event. The University of Iowa's first African-American fraternity is celebrating 100 years on campus. The Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity held a small recognition ceremony on Friday afternoon in the Hubbard Commons to commemorate the occasion. 
Current fraternity president Kyle Davis spoke along with others, including the fraternity vice president and the UI vice president for student life, Tom Rockland. We're all very close because we all go through the same process that really our founding fathers who came to this campus and started this chapter in 1914, which is amazing, went through and have passed along through the years. We've kept that consistent. We just really want to be recognized as a fraternity and not just as another, just another group. Past and current members gathered to honor where the fraternity was 100 years ago and where they hope to go in the 100 years to come. But first, Tana Thompson is here with a look at your warmer weather. Yes, Melissa, temperatures are finally looking up here in Iowa City. But with this comes the mass melting of everything frozen in our area. Water is everywhere right now, and it's making for some serious concern about residential and river flooding. Students have flooded basements, and transportation is becoming an issue as streets and sidewalks fill with water. And this week won't be much help to the problem, as we won't be seeing hardly any of the sun to help dry things out. Tomorrow, we can expect much warmer temperatures starting the day off at 37 degrees. The afternoon will reach a high of 55 with heavy cloud cover, and the evening will fall down to 45 with dense fog. Now, looking on to the rest of the week, we will finally be seeing more spring-like temperatures, but hardly any sunlight. Tuesday, we'll see a high of 44, but Wednesday will drop back down to the low 30s, making it the coldest day of the week. Thursday and Friday's temperatures will rise back up again, reaching the mid-50s, leading us into an equally warm weekend. Well, that's all the weather I have for you guys today. Be sure to get out and enjoy those warm temperatures now that we finally have them. Melissa and Nick, back to you. Thanks, Hannah. Students trying at-home teeth whitening remedies may not have so much to smile about. While popular, teeth whitening both in and out of the dentist chair has risks. Daily Iowan reporter Greta Miley is standing by with today's Medical Minute. Pearly white teeth mean health, beauty, and vitality, right? That's what we've been told anyway. But a UI dentist says trying to achieve that white smile the wrong way can be ineffective. Many individuals use home remedies to gain that brilliant smile. But are these methods effective or even safe? Since it's really, everything is through the internet, you also see many do-it-yourself whitening procedures using strawberries, lemons, and apples, and hydrogen peroxide liquid. Quan said using strawberries and lemons have been proven to be ineffective. But as for hydrogen peroxide and white strips, she advised caution because overuse could be bad for teeth. And it really should not affect your tooth structure, but really penetrate into your tooth and break down the stain molecules inside the tooth. Because all of our teeth are different, Quan said whitening is safer when done in a controlled setting by your dentist. As with any other treatments, it is not risk free. So the American Dental Association has advised to really consult with your dentist first. You want to wear this for two hours each night for seven to 14 days in a row. Um, in dental appointments, Quan records the current shade of patient's teeth and then bleaches their teeth under a light. They really break down your stain molecules into smaller molecules so that they are less visible and that the, the reflectance of the light is changed so that the tooth ultimately looks lighter. Greta Miley, Daily Iowan TV. The UI College of Dentistry says it serves all patients in the Iowa City area. Melissa, Nick, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Greta. Cat Hurt didn't win Juan Pablo's heart, but returning home to Iowa City has to be a pretty good consolation prize. The Bachelor contestant spoke at the Iowa Memorial Union today. A lifelong Hawkeye and UI grad, Cat talked to, to fans about the importance of community engagement. Our sports reporters are out across the nation today covering Hawkeye basketball and wrestling. Ben Ross and Josh Bolander are, on, are standing by in the studio with everything black and gold. Guys? That's right, Nick. What a weekend in Hawkeye sports. Heartbreak and ecstasy from the Big Ten Championships. And believe it or not, the action in Madison and Indianapolis. Not even the most breathtaking moment of the weekend for fans of the black and gold. Just ask Fran McCaffrey alongside Mr. Ben Ross. I'm Josh Bolander. More on Saturday evening's buzzer bean and carver in just a minute. We start the program at Baker's Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, where Lisa Bluter and company's Cinderella run fell just short in the Big Ten tournament. That's right, Ben. The Hawks bid for their first Big Ten title since 2001. Not in the cards this afternoon. Final score in this one, Nebraska 72, 
Iowa 65. Daily Island TV sports anchor Taylor Axelson and Rachel Bedell on location for this one and in the locker room post game. Thanks, guys. We're here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, where we just saw a really tough fought game between Iowa and Nebraska, where Nebraska ended up taking the championship 72 to 65. You know, not a whole lot happened for Iowa in the first half, but a lot happened for them in the second half. It was a really, really hard fought game. You could tell they were fighting for it, but not a lot of the fouls went their way. Mm -mm. I mean, it's always frustrating. You know, you want to be out there on the, on the court as much as you can, give it your all every second that you're out there. And when that happens, it's, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just, it sucks. And uh, Thierra Taylor didn't have as much time on the court during her last Big Ten tournament as she wanted. But you could tell not only is she a leader on the court, her teammates were also looking to her for to cheer them on when she was on the sidelines. I think the team just wanted this for her so badly. And, um, you know, those are the things that hurt probably more than anything is that you just can't send your senior out with uh, what they deserve. Uh, and, and she deserves it. One thing I definitely think we saw today was a lot of passion from the crowd, both sides teams, and something we don't really see that often is Bluter getting a little fired up with a technical. Yeah, and from where we were sitting, uh, number 33, Rachel Terrio, kind of blindsided Dixon mm -hmm. out of bounds. Possession went the other way, and Bluter seemed upset but calm when she was talking to the referee, and then the referee walked away, Coach Bluter stamped her foot, and got the technical. But you can really tell she's got a lot. She's gonna fight for her team. There is nobody in this country that we can't compete with right now. But the girls are really looking forward to the NCAA tournament where they tip off in Carver, home court, in two weeks. And so let's hear what the girls have to say about that. I think we'll probably have a couple days off just to get our legs back. Four games in four days is a lot. Let's get a little rest now and then we're gonna definitely go work on boxing out and getting rebound. We're not going to dwell on this one. Uh, we're going to move forward and we have we have big things to come. You're not going to hear excuses from us though. We're, we'll probably just rest up and get back at it as soon as we can. Well, that's all we got for you guys at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. We'll see you guys back in Iowa City. Yeah, hopefully it's a little happier where you guys are. Josh, Ben, back to you guys. Disappointment for Bluter, quite the opposite for Iowa Wrestling head coach Tom Brands heading into Sunday afternoon's final round of the Big Ten Championships in Madison with five Hawkeye grapplers up for Big Ten hardware. Unfortunately for the black and gold, only one Hawk bringing home the bacon. Tony Ramos, the lone bright spot on championship Sunday, the 133-pounder atop the podium for the very first time in his illustrious career in Iowa City. When that hit zero, I, you know, I just heard, I heard the guy on the outside count down 10, 9, and I knew I had to keep wrestling, keep wrestling, stay in the center. I couldn't go back, or they were going to hit me right away as soon as they could. So, huge weight was lifted. Uh, finally got my name on that side of the wall that you look at every day. That's exciting. And now I just need to add an asterisk up on the other side and, and did everything you could possibly do here. And finally, well, Iowa basketball. Fran McCaffrey's squad continuing their struggles in Big Ten play, dropping their fifth Big Ten game in their last six tries, 66-63 to to Illinois. Grad school transfer John Ickes three-pointer at the buzzer, enough to stun the 24th ranked Hawkeyes on senior night in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Fran McCaffrey and star guard Devin Marble, just like Iowa fans, eager to move on to the postseason. I think we've done a lot of things so far this season. Very pleased with a lot of things that we've done. Uh, but it's a long journey. Uh, I think the Big Ten tournament is exactly what you need. You know, um, something refreshing. Uh, it's a, basically a new start, the start of a new season. Uh, you got the, uh, the postseason play, so you guys got to gotta, gotta find a way to pick it up, you know. Well, Ben, that's it for us tonight. Much more from all of this weekend's action coming up on Monday's edition of the program. But for now, it's back to you at the desk. Thanks, guys. Only with Daily Iowan TV can you check out what's going on in tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. Student startups. The Papa John Business School sets up a student acceleration program to train young entrepreneurs. All their eggs in one basket? Midwestern states, including Iowa, are suing California for recent regulations the state put on egg production. Connect to Daily Iowan TV anytime by checking us out on Facebook and following us on Twitter. Daily Iowan TV will be right back here tomorrow night, same time. Good night.